Okay. Um, first, let's just draw the spheres. Uh, this will be after it's just released, and this will be um, after a long time and it's reached terminal. Uh, after it's just released, rele so in this problem, your sphere, it is being pulled down by its weight, and as it speeds up, there is some retarding force here, which is equal to negative kV. The negative in this case is due to that we've called down the positive direction and up the negative, and that's where the negative comes from. As soon as you let go of it, its velocity is zero, and just the weight is pulling down. So that's the weight, because the velocity is zero, so there's no upward force. Um, at some time later, uh, whenever it's at a long time and reach term velocity, um, it will have the weight vector, which has not changed, and it will also have the resistive force, which is supposed to be directly up, but I can't draw to the right. And these uh, magnitudes of the vectors are the exact same size. The weight equals this retarding force here, um, or rather the magnitude of each of them are equal. Okay. Uh, this means that the net acceleration here is zero because you're at terminal velocity. You're no longer speeding up. Um, so let us determine the terminal velocity of uh, the sphere. Um, so how would we go about doing this? Well, what we can say here is uh, the sphere just has a mass m. Um, if we look at f equals ma, because f equals ma is... Uh... Yeah, we can do that. Um, let's set up f equals ma real quick. Okay. If I look at my two forces, I have a weight minus uh, this right here, this kV, equals a mass times an acceleration. Well, if you are at terminal velocity, your acceleration is a big fat zero meters per second squared. Since your acceleration is zero, uh, this entire side goes away. It just became a zero, if that makes sense which means I'm going to add the kV over. So I have now W equals kV, divide the k back. And I find that the terminal velocity will equal weight, which is mg divided by k. That's my term. So nothing too bad there. Um, uh, draw the following three graphs of the sphere's motion, uh, clearly showing significant features of the motion just after the sphere is released, as well as after a long time. Um, and the three graphs they want of us here are a position, a velocity, and I did not give myself enough space. And acceleration graph. So what are we going to do about this? Um, what we can say here is that when we look at these, um, we know we're going to be speeding up as we're going down until we reach some terminal velocity. So this velocity here is going to peak at the terminal. Um, and we know it's not like, so there's three ways to get there. Are you going to go up like this? Or are you going to go in a straight line? Or are you going to ramp like that? Um, the straight line doesn't make sense because at some point we have to get here and go flat and the ramping up this way doesn't make sense because at some point we got to go flat. So it seems that the only thing that's going to make sense is this kind of increasing where we get that uh, concave down slope there for the velocity. Um, for the position function, um, what this means is initially if we start, well, let's just pretend going down is positive direction. Um, for our position function then, what we're going to have is, uh, uh, let's see, out here I'm a flat line, and since that's a flat line, at some point this will keep just like a straight line here like that, um, but initially because I'm speeding up faster and faster, because um, I have some, well, I'm speeding up, but I'm speeding up slower and slower. So, uh, work with me, computer. I'm speeding up, but I'm speeding up slower because I'm initially speeding up with just the weight due to gravity. <clears throat> and later on, there's a resistive force pushing against me. So, initially, 
when I am speeding up faster and faster, I am going to have some sort of like, oh, I'm still erasing. I'm going to be gaining distance and I'm going to be accelerating, accelerating. I'm always going faster and faster. And that's through kind of this region right here. I have some sort of acceleration, so I'm going to speed up. And then once I hit that terminal velocity, maybe it's like right here. Um, once I hit that point, I'm just going to keep this as a straight line. Okay, because right here I'm at V terminal. Um, as for the acceleration, our acceleration is actually going in an opposite direction. Um, we initially started our acceleration at G, but then when we hit terminal velocity, it had to get to zero. Uh, so that acceleration is going to look like this. And we can think about that as the ways before. Is it going to go down like this? Is it going to be a straight line or is it going to do that? Um, clearly, if it's going to hit zero and remain zero, when we hit terminal, it's got to be that concave up look. Um, and then do we need to actually get the functions here? Um, I don't think so. Oh, it's just those three things. Yeah, so that's all we had to do for this problem. Um, in later years, what they'd ask you to do is they'd ask you to take, um, uh, and I think in 2008 they did this, you have this equation uh, where this is actually MA here, and they ask you to write a differential on it. And what they ask you to do is to say um, W minus uh, KV equals M, and that's going to be DV DT. And in doing so, well, here, let me make this weight just an mg. mg. And in doing so, when we do this, um, this entire term on the left here has to come underneath uh, while the dt can come over. So what we're actually going to have is uh, dt over m equals dv over the quantity mg minus kv and then you have to spend some time running an integra integration uh, from 0 to t and from an initial velocity of 0 to some velocity later v of t this is a u sub where you have to set u equal to mg minus kv that means du is equal to negative k. Um, you multiply by negative k, but that means you have to divide by that. Um, but you don't have to do this in the problem. This is the 2008 problem where you have to do this. Up here, you just have to, uh, you just have to show this. I'll just finish this out because if you if you were trying to do this for 2008, then I'll just show you where to go here. Um, I'm going to move this one over negative k over the other side because I know it's going to belong there. So I'm going to get negative k over m integral from zero to t dt is going to be t in the end. Um, and then over here, I'm going to have uh, integral from zero to vt because I don't like to change my bounds of du over u. It's going to give me a natural log in a second. Well, but dumb. And in a different space thing, this is going to give me negative k over m times t equals the natural log of uh, mg minus kv bounded from 0 to vt. These bounds actually matter for once here because the 0 goes in for v and the v of t goes in for v, which means when you do this, you get the minus kt over m equals natural log of mg minus k v of t minus the natural log of m g and in doing so on this this is a subtraction so it can uh, um, log rule right so minus k t over m equals natural log of m g minus k v of t over m g Exponentiate each side, e to the, e to the, whoosh. So we get e to the negative kt over m equals uh, mg over mg is 1. I'm going to say 1. Well, here, I'm not going to do that. I actually find it easier to do this. Um, 
I'm going to take the mg that I now have and multiply it to the other side. So, well, hold on. Do I want to do that? How do I normally do this? No, I do it like this. mg over mg is 1, and then minus kv of t, or k times v of t over mg. Um, I'm going to take this term and blomp it over, this term and slide it over. So I get uh, math time. Um, k v of t over mg equals 1 minus e to the negative k over m t. And then uh, I'm going to take the mg. This is a quantity because I'm going to bring the mg over and the k under. So I'm going to get v of t equals mg over k times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative k over m t. And this is what they would ask you to do in the year 2008. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, luckily for us, if you set time to be infinity here, um, uh, at time equals infinity, uh, this is e to the, um, well, this is 1 over e to the infinity, so this is like 0 here, which means this is 1 minus 0, so it's just 1. And that means v terminal is just equal to mg over k, this constant in front, which is actually, I believe, what we solved uh, way up here. That's just a lot of math to get there. It's kind of annoying. But it's not... It's not terrible to do. And in 2008, I do this exact same thing. If you check out the 2008 mechanics for response. Uh, would you have to integrate a second time to get position? Yeah. Yeah, you would. Um, why can't I scroll left? You have to integrate a second time to get position. Um, do you need to... I don't think you actually have to get the functions in this problem. I think the way that problem looks here, um, I think all they're asking you to do is to draw it for the acceleration graph, which is this one, draw it for the velocity graph, this one, draw it as a position graph for this last one. And uh, um, let's see, I'm looking at the key here to see if they gave, I don't, they don't have any uh, equations on the key. So you got a point for, oh man, they wrote that in cursive because it was 1975. Um, so for part A, or for rather the acceleration graph, you got a point for you got a point for an exponential slope, which we have. Um, you get one point for a labeled intercept, which we do have. It's G, um, and you got one point for an asymptote. So boom, we're good. Uh, for the velocity, you get a point for. They want a negative slope at the origin. We call it positive down, so nowadays you'd be cool with that. Um, you, we got a point for an exponential slope, which we do have here. Um, and we got a point for the labeled horizontal asymptote, which is VT. So we're good on that one too. Um, and, uh, um, and we didn't put VT was MG over K, but we did label it VT, which we did solve for up here. So we're good on that. Um, and the last one for position, um, we got one point for a greater slope at the origin because we're accelerating, so we're good there. Um, we got one point for, I think it just says general slope, which may mean this piece up here. And then one point for... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that says. But we did we did fine on that. That's all they wanted you to do in this problem, though. They just wanted you to kind of graph stuff. So the 70s were a much easier time in the world of uh, AP Physics.